Hi, I'm Chef Gail Sokol and welcome to my kitchen. Today we're making double fudge brownies. Now, I don't know about you, but I love brownies. Some people would say it's an addiction. I love them. And I know that's not a, a, a apropos word, but I love them. If I see a recipe for a brownie in the newspaper, in a magazine, on television, a friend makes a brownie I like, I must have the recipe. I have to try it because I'm always searching for the perfect brownie, you know, brownie nirvana. Ah. So I have to keep trying. And I think these come pretty close. So before we get started, I'd like you to click that notification button because I'd like you to become a subscriber. And I don't want you to miss any of my tips or videos. And I love having you in my kitchen with me and I love teaching you how to bake. So double fudge brownies, they're small batch. You can double them if you want to, just a nine by nine inch pan. And I have sprayed it with nonstick cooking spray and I've taken two pieces of parchment, they don't have to fit perfectly, and have crisscrossed them to form a cross, and they come up about an inch around each side. That is going to help us lift our brownie up when it's done, and it's gonna have a wonderful fudge frosting on it. Um, very ganache, but absolutely silky and spectacular. Okay, so you don't need a mixer, super easy. Preheat your oven to 325 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, and I have been known to make these brownies if I have a yen for them. I'll say, uh, I want brownies and I want them like in, you know, now. So I make them and they're ready within, within a short period of time because I do have to let them cool. Maybe. <laughs> Sometimes I don't. All right. So before we actually make our batter in our large bowl, we're going to do some preparation. So over a bain-marie or over a hot water bath, I have melted four tablespoons of unsalted butter. I have melted three ounces of unsweetened chocolate and a third of a cup of semi-sweet chocolate chips. And I melted that till it looks like a beautiful chocolate puddle. And you know how to make a bain-marie, right? So you take about one inch of water, bring it to a boil, and then take it off the heat and then put your chocolate and butter over and it will melt beautifully. You can stir it every once in a while and it'll melt in about 10 minutes. All right, next we have some dry ingredients and brownies, very few brownies have tons of flour because that would be a chocolate cake. We're not making a chocolate cake. That's a whole different animal. We're making a brownie. So I only have a quarter cup of all purpose flour. So I'm gonna mix a few ingredients in there and we're gonna mix in three tablespoons, I'm sorry, two tablespoons of unsweetened cocoa powder, okay? So just two tablespoons of unsweetened cocoa powder. It is not Dutch process, it's just natural cocoa powder. If you wanted to use Dutch process, it would be fine, but we want the acidity of this natural cocoa powder, because most cocoa powder is acidic, we want it to react with our chemical leavener, our baking powder, so that it does rise a little bit, because this is a brownie, you know, a brownie with a capital B. So in this flour and cocoa mixture, I'm gonna add one teaspoon of baking powder and a half a teaspoon of salt. Remember, it's two tablespoons of unsweetened cocoa powder to one quarter cup all-purpose flour. All right, once that is done, we're gonna just set that aside. This is part of our mise en place. So we have our melted chocolate, and now we're gonna actually build our brownie. All right, so in a very large bowl, you can do it in a mixer if you want to, but if you don't, don't worry about it. In it I have uh, one cup of granulated sugar in here, and uh, you know, brownies are relatively sweet, and the brownies and the butter, that helps with that crackly surface and just makes it chewy and gooey and just yum, yum, yum. So one cup of granulated sugar, three large eggs. I always crack them so that they're in some sort of a container, I don't know, like a liquid measuring cup, a pitcher, um, even a mug, whatever you want to use. Just don't crack them right into the sugar. Because if you end up with a shell, 
you're going to be sorry because you're going to have to go pick it out and find it. One teaspoon of pure vanilla extract. Delicious. All right. And we're going to get that whisked together. Now, this is where you can work off your brownie. <laughs> okay, I always say. Baking is a physical activity. It's like an exercise, at least the way I do it. So you're going to actually whisk this until the egg, the egg, see how sort of, they're sort of a bright yellow now. They're going to get sort of pale because we're going to whisk a little air in them. Okay, so you're just going to get that going. Use a little arm action, people. Okay, get that moving. Rotate your bowl. Sort of like patting your head and rubbing your stomach at the same time. I could never do that. You can see it's lightening up already. All right. After about 30 seconds to a minute, it will lighten up. And this is when we start adding our melted butter and chocolates, double chocolates for double fudge brownies. Ooh, ooh, I feel like I've been to my personal trainer. Wow. I can feel those biceps and triceps. Okay, now you can actually see pale yellow, right? So before you add your chocolate and your butter, you're going to get rid of your water, put that aside, and have some sort of a clean kitchen towel or a paper towel, whatever, to wipe the bottom. You don't want the water from the steam that forms as the chocolate and butter melt. You don't want to add that into your brownie. That would be a no-no. So I am going to add that in with my rubber spatula, and I'm going to whisk that in. You can let it melt, uh, you know, sort of uh, cool for a minute or two, but you don't really have to. You don't want to cook your eggs. So if it's really, really hot, just let it sit, the chocolate that is, for a minute or two. All right, so I'm going to get that in there. Now, I'm just going to put this aside, my rubber spatula, and I'm just going to whisk this in. Once I get to my dry ingredients, I'm going to fold them in with my rubber spatula because I don't want to develop a lot of gluten. I want our brownies to be tender and chewy and gooey. All right. So we're just going to get that mixed in. And no matter what, how I mix now, I'm not going to be able to develop gluten because there's no flour in here yet. All right. So whisk away. And now I'm done whisking. I'm going to get rid of this whisk. And now I'm going to add my dry ingredients. So remember the flour, the cocoa powder, baking powder, and the salt. I'm just going to add that in there. And I'm going to use my rubber spatula. You don't, you're not folding them in. You're mixing them in, but you're mixing them in gently. All right. And then we're going to add a few accoutrements and the magic ingredient, which I did not tell you about. Ooh. So secret, magic ingredient. So you can see you're just mixing this in. You're just sort of gently mixing it. You don't want to go nuts because you, like I said, you really don't want to develop those gluten-forming proteins and making a tough brownie. I have never heard of a tough brownie. Have you ever heard of a tough brownie? Never. I've never had a tough brownie. I've had cakey brownies, which I prefer a fudgy brownie. But I will tell you, um, the first... The first competition I was ever in, I made a big tort and I won first place. The, the tort, I wanted it to be a brownie base and this is the brownie I used. And I won a gold medal. It was awesome. So this is a gold medal winner of a brownie. All right, so just to add a little more, you know, something extra, one quarter cup of whole milk yogurt. Uh, you can add sour cream if you want. But the whole milk yogurt gives it a little richness. It's only a quarter of a cup. It's only a quarter of a cup, remember. So you're going to fold that in. You're going to fold that in. And it just makes the batter that much richer and creamier. It's sort of like my little secret weapon. All right. Now I want to really double this up. So we had a little cocoa powder, but this is the double. One cup of semi-sweet chocolate chunks. You can break it up off of a candy bar or you can buy them in chunks. And then I love walnuts. This is my favorite nut with a brownie. I am also partial to pecans, 
but walnuts are superior in this brownie. If you don't like nuts, you're allergic to nuts, leave them out. All right, so one cup of coarsely chopped uh, or finely chopped walnuts. I have toasted them first. Makes such a difference. They taste so much better. Look at that batter. It's beautiful right there, but don't eat it. Don't eat it. Not yet. Wait. You have to be patient. You must be patient. All right, we're ready. I'm going to get my pan. I'm going to hoist my bowl up, and I'm going to pour this into my pan. And it bakes for about 40 minutes because it's 325. Some brownie recipes bake at 350. This is 325 for about 40 minutes. And when you stick a knife in, it may not come out completely clean. So don't worry about it. That means you have almost reached nirvana because it's going to be fudgy. And you're going to let it cool for a few minutes. And then we're going to put on our fudge frosting and then chill it. So before you put it in the oven, I don't want to waste a second of this batter, just a smidgen. I'm on every smidgen in here. I use my offset spatula. And this is, this is the spatula. It's got a little kink in it. And they make them in different sizes. I'm going to run this around so that the brownie gets spread all the way to the edges, nice and neat. And then into the oven for about 40 minutes till a knife stuck in the middle of it comes out almost clean, but it may have a few, you know, chocolatey stuffs attached to it, and that's fine. See you back. So my beautiful brownies came out exactly after 40 minutes of being in a 325 degree oven, and I put a small sharp knife in the center, and it came out with a little bit of chocolate on there. Yum. Take it out, do not overbake, and I let it cool for about two or three minutes, so it's still very hot. I can't really touch it. In the meantime, I made the fudge frosting, which is really a ganache. So I took one cup of heavy cream, about a teaspoon of light corn syrup, and that's to give it a sheen, like a shine on it to make it look really, really beautiful. And then I took two cups of semi-sweet chocolate chips. So what I did first, in a saucepan, I heated my one cup of heavy cream to a simmer, just under a boil. If you bring it to a boil, that's fine, but never walk away because heavy cream loves to go all over your cooktop. Trust me, I have some experience on that front. Take it off the heat after it comes to a boil and add your uh, two cups of chocolate chips. Add the corn syrup in with the heavy cream so it gets dissolved and then mix it all up with a whisk until all the chocolate melts and it becomes this beautiful mass, this beautiful frosting, which will firm up almost like a fudge. So in the meantime, if you can see, this is pretty hot, but if I tilt it towards you, you can see this sort of looks like, I don't know, the way I would picture the surface of Mars to look like, sort of lumpy and bumpy, you know, you can picture astronauts walking around, you know, but I don't want to pour my fudge frosting on the surface of Mars. I want to get it a little flatter. So what you can do, you can wait until they're cooler or you can do it now. And I take an offset spatula, like a, a flatter one, almost like ones to get cookies off a sheet pan. This is an offset spatula to spread. Uh, but this is for getting cookies off, but I also use it to lift things up. Now I'm going to use it to press down. So I'm going to go over and I'm going to gently press down on my surface so that it flattens out. We don't want any craters. We don't want a surface of Mars. And the reason I'm doing this instead of something like a measuring cup, because this has square edges, so it's a lot easier to do. So I'm just pushing down, and I'll show it to you afterwards. You may not be able to see the difference, but it has flattened out considerably. Okay? Okay? No big, no big, no biggie if you don't do it. So what I'm going to do is give my ganache a stir, and I've let it thicken a little bit. So I've just let it um, sort of sit off the heat for about maybe 10, 15 minutes. And then I'm, go I'm going to go get a spatula, a, a rubber spatula first. And I'm going to pour this gloriousness over this hot brownie all over. 
all over. And it's going to be a nice, thick coverage of fudge on top. And it's not real fudge. It's really a ganache. But it's a fudge-like fudge -like icing that you can actually use ganache for so many different things. It's, it's really um, the way truffles are made. It is also can be used as a frosting. You can also glaze a cake or cupcakes. I use it on so many different things. OK, so I'm just going to smooth the edges. It's getting a little bit, a little bit cooler that I can move it around. And don't worry if the ganache goes over uh, and touches the glass or your baking, uh, your baking pan. Don't worry about that because we've sprayed it with nonstick cooking spray. And once it's cold, it's going to come away from the pans because, again, we're going to use this and sort of push it in between the pan and the brownie and get those loosened. So don't worry. So now I'm just spreading it nicely. You have to always take a lick. Mm. Oh, so good. I always have to be, you know, quality control, right? So I have a little sea salt. You don't have to do it if you don't like the sea salt. I love sweet and salty, and I love a little chocolate and salt. So just gently sprinkle some sea salt over. I just used my judgment. It's like probably about an eighth of a teaspoon, quarter of a teaspoon, depending on what you want to use. But you want, you can use kosher salt too, but use sea salt or any type of a, a coarser salt so you can actually see the crystals. And you get a little bit of sweet and salty, and then you get those beautiful walnuts inside. It's going to be delicious. Now, I'm going to let this get to room temperature now because I don't want to put it too hot in my fridge. And then I'm going to let it chill until the, gana the ganache or the fudge frosting and the brownies are nice and firm. Don't cut your brownie until it's really chilled and nice and firm. So that should take probably a couple hours if you want to speed up the process. Put it in the freezer for a while. That would be fine between 30 minutes and an hour. I'll see you back. So my double chocolate fudge brownies have been chilling till the frosting got nice and firm, the ganache frosting or the fudge frosting. And I took, I cut around just the edges that were not uh, touching any parchment and cut around them with a small sharp knife, lifted it out with my little helpers, right? My parchment paper that stuck up and I just peeled it off all three edges. And now I'm going to do the fourth and you can see it just peels off. If it's nice and cold, it'll peel. All right. So it looks really nice. Now I have a nice big tall glass of hot water and because knives are metal, uh, you can actually heat the metal up, and they're great conductors, and they'll slice right through this brownie. And I'm going to cut them into tiny brownies because they're pretty rich. So I'm going to cut right through, and it should go right nicely right through. Oh, oh, oh my goodness. Oh, oh, my goodness. Oh, a little piece <laughs> came off. Oh my gosh, oh my gosh. Best brownie ever, folks. Best brownie ever. Oh my gosh, it's so good. So, so good. See that brownie? Best brownie you will ever have in your life. And I'll put it on here. And they are delightful. You can see bits of walnuts in them and the frosting, the fudgy topping. OMG. I hope you make these brownies. I hope you become a subscriber. You will not be sorry. Till next time.